If you've watched my previous videos, you may have already guessed that I used to work in paleontology. For the last 10 years, I've been on a personal quest to turn one of my discoveries into a life-size museum quality display. But I hit a wall at the very finish line. I wanted to electroplate my 3D printed fossil to make it both strong and stylish, but it turns out that complicated shapes like a skeleton are among the most difficult things to plate. Luckily, I love a good challenge. And now I'm happy to share with you how I finally got over that last hurdle. To understand why this skeleton is particularly challenging to electroplate, let's quickly go over how the plating process works. First, you coat the 3D print in a special paint to make it conduct electricity. Then you hang it from some conductive wire and submerge it in an electrolyte solution made from copper dissolved in acid. A piece of copper goes into the tub next, and both things are hooked up to a power supply. The negative lead goes on the piece you want to plate, making it the cathode, and the positive lead goes to the piece of copper, making it the anode. When a current runs through the whole system, the electric flow causes some copper to migrate away from the anode and build up on the surface of the print. This can be done with other metals as well, but I'm sticking to copper because it's cheap and has the golden color that I'm after. Sounds simple enough, right? Now let's talk about what can go wrong, and what to do about it. The main challenge is getting the copper to coat evenly. The ions in solution will want to go wherever the current is strongest. The wire I use to hang the print is much more conductive than the graphite paint that covers it, so plating will occur first and fastest close to the wire. That can be a bug, or a feature. After some experimentation, I found I could use the wire to direct conduction wherever I wanted it. Wrapping the whole print loosely would help it to plate evenly, or I could arrange the wire to channel extra electricity to a specific spot. One place that I found doesn't need any extra conductivity is points, and my boy has a lot of them. Electricity follows the path of least resistance, so spots that stick out into space act like lightning rods, drawing extra current and causing excess copper to build up. Luckily, I was able to use the hanging wire to mitigate this problem too. By intentionally forming it into lightning rods that stick even farther out than the points on my print, I ensured that the extra copper deposited on the wire, not on the skeleton. Now while some places were attracting too much metal, others struggled to get any at all. As ions flow from anode to cathode, they will build up on surfaces close to the anode, but surfaces opposite that may fall into what's called an anode shadow. My print is smothered in the nooks and crannies that are likely to fall into shadow. But the problem can be minimized by placing a second anode on the opposite side of the bath from the first, sort of like adding a second light source to a photograph. The other solution is to change up the orientation of the print by regularly repositioning it by hand or by using a constantly rotating mechanical jig. With these principles in mind, I prepared my 3D prints for plating strategically. For example, these legs are each loosely wrapped in copper wire, with a lightning rod sticking out past the pointy toes on each side. I also knew the inside of the pelvis was going to have anode shadow problems, so I intentionally ran the wire close to the inner surface to bring more current there. I took a different approach with these vertebrae though, where I wrapped only the vertebral bodies with wire and then left the ribs exposed, counting on all those little lightning rods to attract plenty of copper all on their own. Now, if dealing with all the nooks, crannies, and points on one section of this fossil sounds complicated, can you imagine trying to successfully plate all five parts together? I can, because I tried it, and it went okay. But after building a veritable Faraday cage around my print, and spending over 18 hours electroplating, fine-tuning my setup, and trying to get things to plate evenly, I still couldn't get the perfect, consistent, shiny coat of metal that I wanted. This was honestly pretty demoralizing, but I knew there was hope. You see, I had some failed 3D prints when I was first trying to assemble my critter, and I had practiced electroplating on those until I got the kind of results I was after. I figured if I plated each section individually and assembled them afterward, that would keep the difficulty to a level I could manage. It wasn't easy to give up on the first attempt that I had put so much effort into, but after 10 years researching this guy, what's another week of work? He's worth it. Breaking the project up did introduce one new challenge, though. Freshly plated copper is bright and shiny, but it tarnishes rapidly, so I worried that the segments might end up different colors from one another. To solve this, I let each section tarnish for 72 hours, then I sealed it with a clear coat to prevent any further oxidizing. 
Game Day 2.0. I was determined to make it work this time, and nothing was going to stand in my way. I applied my graphite paint with a small brush. An airbrush would have produced a smoother, more consistent coat of paint, but it also would have missed many of the nooks and crannies of the skeleton. I really don't mind a little texture either, since that only makes it look more like real bone. I considered making the graphite paint myself, but being new at this, I wanted to minimize the things that I could mess up. Even so, I had to try a few different brands before I found a paint that I was really happy with. You've already seen how I wrapped the prints in copper wire, but to maximize conductivity, I first scraped off the wire's patina with some steel wool and tack cloth. I did the same thing with the anode sheets, and then I put them in bags made of filter cloth to catch any gunk that might slough off as the anodes broke down. I also filtered the electrolyte solution itself before using it to remove any impurities. I purchased bright acid copper electrolyte for this project. Like the graphite paint, electrolyte solutions can be made cheaply at home, and I'll probably try that in the future, but buying it was easier for now. With the print suspended in solution between both anodes and my power supply set to output constant voltage, I set the machine to around 0.2 volts. After 20 minutes, you can see that some copper had already started depositing on the skeleton. The underside of the jaw seemed to be falling into an anode shadow though, so after wiggling the print a little to make sure it didn't weld to the wire, I adjusted its position so the jaw would face one of the anodes. I then put the print back in the bath and turned on the power again, this time at about 0.3 volts. Another 20 minutes later, the copper coating was looking a lot more even. A little more wiggling, another orientation change, and I gave it another 20 minutes at 0.4 volts. At this point, it was clear that a couple small areas of the print were just not getting plated. This probably means that I didn't get enough graphite paint there, one of the drawbacks to using a regular brush instead of an airbrush. But it's no big deal. I rinsed the print in some distilled water, dried it, and then put a little extra paint on the problem spots. After another 20 minutes at 0.4 volts, the defects were gone. With copper now on all areas of the print, and some spots already starting to shine, I brought the power up to 0.8 volts and let more copper deposit. After 30 minutes, things were looking shinier. And after an hour, almost the whole print was glittering. I decided to call it good at that point, because if the plating went on too long, I could start getting bumpy excess copper building up on some surfaces. There were just a couple of spots that I still wanted to get more shine on, but that was easy to bring out by polishing with a rotary tool and some red jewelers rouge. I followed the same process on the other four parts, let them age a little, sealed them with a clear coat, and then glued this handsome Humpty Dumpty back together again. I'm so happy with how this turned out. The shiny copper really makes my fossil look like a high-end museum display, and it turns an otherwise very fragile 3D print into something quite durable. Speaking of which, in my efforts to keep this video focused and concise, I cut out tons of content on other topics like the printing process, uh, testing the bones to see how strong they were after plating, and the crazy anatomy of this critter. If any of that's interesting to you, let me know in the comments. Thanks for joining me on this very personally special project. I'll be back again soon with more creations, so until then, let us not say goodbye, but rather, as the French say, hors d'oeuvre. Mm-hmm. <laughs>